little bit of status update. Um, obviously, the car is in a garage now. It's no longer in my parents' driveway, and um, it's still tight. It's a kind of tight fit. Um, but it's what it is. I moved a bunch of stuff around. Uh, it's actually quite amazing. I actually got in the garage in the first place, but. Um, Thanks to that, now I can work during the night on engine mechanical, well, not engine, well, most engine stuff, interior stuff. Um, I don't think I have enough space to do any suspension work, maybe some under, some under car work, but honestly, there's not really much space. Um, future plans, I would like to make more space, more, at least sideways space, um, so I can, um, work on the suspension and um, right now forward and backwards very tight there was no space to walk behind the car there's no space to walk in front of the car uh, I have to walk around a bunch of stuff that's all over the place um, also we're like in the future a new table so I don't have to use that um, chest freezer as a table anymore probably gonna make it collapsible due to space constraints um, but yeah, I'm glad that I have a garage now, so I can work during the night, which is um, um, which matches better my with my schedule, current schedule right now. And uh, yeah, hopefully, the situation improve. Okay, so um, ready now. I retested the fuel injectors using a external battery. And all the injectors uh, fire properly without any issues. They all have the same resistance. Fuel system is perfectly good. We got fuel pressure. Intake system, you cannot screw up, especially when only two cylinders are misfiring or not firing at all. And um, the mechanical pressure, um, cylinder one is has lost 30 psi, but cylinder three is at um, perfect. So since we're misfiring on two cylinders. And we're also misfiring on cylinder that has good compression. Highly doubt that um, mechanical is not a problem. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, what um, is um, typically argued on the forms of uh, rewiring the fuel injectors. Now, on um, for those who don't know, the 300ZX Z31 chassis had an issue with a uh, fire. And it's not quite a recall, but uh, they want the... Uh, fuel injectors replaced with new ones. It doesn't leak, but it, however, the new fuel injectors uses a new wiring harness. The new wiring harness is not um, has to be spliced into the old harness. So um, when they splice it in to save effort, they uh, rewire the way the injectors fire, and um, this caused um, mass arguments about um, engine performance. For those who do not know, um, the ECU has two fire mode, um, injective firing modes, simultaneous and group firing. The ignition firing order is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And when the and ECU is in uh, simultaneous firing mode, it fires all injectors all at once. And that only does that when it's uh, on cold starts, when it's um, under load or at high RPM. On all other situations, it goes into group firing mode, where cylinders 1, 2, and 3 is group 1, and 4, 5, and 6 is group 2. And uh, it does that uh, on any other um, situations where uh, simultaneous is not really needed and the ECU can run this mode. Issue is when Nissan rewired the had the dealership rewired the injectors, it they changed the group ordering to one, three, and five, and two, four, and six, which does not correspond to the ignition um, firing order. Now, uh, people argue that either um, this causes their cars to run like crap, to well, it shouldn't cause any issues. Maybe there's something wrong with your car. I'm not gonna really debate about this. Um, I'm only doing this only because 
uh, I'm just trying to solve, figure out what's going, causing this bus misfire. It's possible that the um, solder joints has failed or a crimp joints has failed on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewire it back to factory. And thus, when it's back to factory, I can um, check test the uh, injector wiring using the factory spec. And hopefully this mis fixes my misfire. First thing I need to do first is I need to strip back the insulation on the harness here and the harness over here to expose the um, injector wiring. Okay, so I have stripped back the insulation, um, not insulation, the electrical tape on um, the old um, har uh, ignition, not ignition, old, uh, what it called again, fuel injector harness. And um, so I just, also I stripped back the um, the what's called the shielding the uh, plastic wrap for the um, new harness over here. Um, this is going to injector one on this engine. And so now, um, well, first thing is if you're looking for it, the um, injector three is what um, the new harness is spliced into. Injector um, one is seems to be wrapped with the fuel temperature sensor wire, and injector um, five is wrapped against the main harness over here. So if you're looking for it, it would be on the area. And also, um, Xeon Z car has a written article on how to do this if you're still having trouble. And um, you can also verify which injector is which by uh, checking the wiring. Um, the uh, color coding on the wiring. Uh, red is gonna be gonna be identical for um, all all injectors, and that's the power. And then you have um, for the NA car, you have um, green with blue stripe on the cylinder. Not cylinder, yeah, cylinder five. Green with black stripe on cylinder three, which is what the splice harness is into, and. Um, just plain green for uh, cylinder one. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the um, heat heat shrink on the um, what's it called the old harn in injectors wiring harness. I'm gonna take out the um, I'm gonna probably cut this over here. Uh, I'm gonna keep as much of the wiring as possible because um, I don't want to go. I'm not trying to tuck this and want to make it um, serviceable. I want as much free length as possible. I'm debating if I want to, um, over here it's crimped, but it's possible it's cause my problem, so I'm not sure if I want to keep this crimp area or not. Um, for the cylinder one. But um, I'm going to start cutting it and then uh, preparing it for soldering. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> I realized I was slurring my words a little bit. And probably should have went to bed at that point. So this next day, uh, I'm taking a look at this. Um, I noticed that the ground wire is a little bit longer than the um, positive wire. So I'm going to trim the ground wire down a little bit. Just so um, it would um, be, ni be nice to heat shrink and look nice. So um, I'm going to trim the ground wire down. And then I'm going to start starting these wires together. Okay, so I got all the wires um, soldered. So they're all uh, connected back to their respective um, OEM wiring. I have, plus I added extra, I didn't really add extra slack, but um, I save as much of the new wiring as possible, so I have uh, a little bit of slack when uh, dealing with the wiring harness. So, next thing I'll do is I'll just plug everything back in and it start working on the other side okay so um, um, now I'm working on the driver's side bank uh, make things easier I just took out the intake tubing upper intake tubing I unfastened the wiring harness from the intake manifold I uh, took out all the ground straps and uh, some of the connections I should probably unplug this guy also and um, I also took out the throttle and cruise control cables. So now I have a little, plenty of room to work with the wiring harness. Well, 
Plenty as in Z code or no version of Plenty. So um, anyway, looks like the it splice into um, uh, cylinder four, the uh, adapter harness, the uh, cutout harness is um, cylinder one, not cylinder one, cylinder two is over here, and I think cylinder six is over here. So, um, although I'm going to verify that once I get the expose, but I'm going to first unravel all this electrical tape. Here's the injector wiring. It's um, the harness splicing cylinder four. I double checked the wiring diagram. It's um, all the wirings, um, color, the ground co colors correspond with the uh, correct injectors I'm looking for. So, um, next thing I'll do is I'll just. Um, strip back the um, adapter harness or whatever the injector harness and I get as much of the um, new harnesses as I could so I have extra slack to solder into and then I'll just start soldering okay so I've uh, finished soldering every, all the wiring again um, I kinda gave a little bit more slack than needed but extra wiring doesn't hurt um, Everything's heat shrinked and secured. Um, I've uh, checked the wiring harn. I uh, checked the resistance on the for the ECU connection to the um, battery, and everything's good. So we have zero resistance, nearly zero resistance on the wiring. So um, probably resistance is the hundredth of ohm. So I'm willing to bet that's pretty much success. Next thing I just need to do is just um, put all. We connect everything and button everything up, and um, I cannot start the car tonight because it's too late. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna push it outside and and fire it up. Hopefully, it will stop misfiring. Okay, so car's outside. It's nice uh, morning, uh, not morning, afternoon, and everything's buttoned up. Um, fluids checked. Uh, now your negative terminals connected. Car's ready to start. Hopefully, it's not misfiring. Let's see. Stop misfiring. <laughs> 